talking to people back with another 1930s film watch along indeed another pre-code hollywood movie this one's starring norma shearer and i understand she actually won the best actress academy award for this as well as chester morris our favorite beale from the 1932 film redheaded woman so yeah, ultimately, I don't know anything about it. Indeed, on the back of the box, it doesn't even list the year. It also doesn't show a director. Robert Z. Leonard is listed as the producer, and he gets the sole credit in that regard. So without any other information, I'm going to assume he was more or less the director. It's an MGM film, an all-talking picture, as you can see. Presumably, this is our divorcee, uh, Miss Shear, right here indicating very clearly that the trend of women wearing dead animals around their necks in the 1930s is already well represented so uh yeah i don't know anything what the divorcee is up to after her marriage So yeah, normally I always start it by saying the year of whatever I'm reacting to, but I'm, I can't help you here, at least not until I post it and look it up online afterward. <laughs> the line's like, you know what? I don't have it today. I'm going back to my trailer. Gowns! Well, always the gowns. Apparently, if you made a film in the 1930s, you were legally obligated to specify where you got your gowns from. So Chester is Ted. Is he also a divorcee? Divorcee? Is he the other one? All right, well, we just enjoy that look for a moment. I'd just like to say I don't respect any fish on the wall unless they're that motorized one that sings. That poor cat just being carried around a film set. Are they playing cards with their grandfathers? Cold wrap nice. All right. Well, we'll make New York by half past ten if we get started <laughs> on time. Also, what do you think of my mid-Atlantic accent? Three hearts. Five spades. Hearts. Little slam and spades. Hearts. <laughs> I hope you make it. Your ex-husband says he divorced you because of overbidding. Yeah. Well, you take it from me. My ex-husband's ex-wife divorced him because he sang in his bar stuff. <laughs> you ought to double six spades, Dr. Menard. Huh? <laughs> Come on, Doc, get hot. Step on it. Loosen up, Doc, loosen up. I object to his pants and boots. This is the, this is the 1930s, for fuck's cold. sake. So we have promised fish, games of cards, and some psychopathic ukulele player. Uh, which of this uh, ribald cast of misfit characters will end up being narratively significant, I wonder? Oh, damn. Dancing with me, not giving me an osteopathic treatment. There's nothing personal, I assure you. And if you would take your mind off Paul and concentrate more on your own left leg, I think we'd do a lot better. Make it. Oh, Doctor, you should... I'd like to comment on that, but I'm not sure what joke to make. You played your queen instead of a ten spot. Wow. Sorry. 
I can't keep my mind on my cards. I'm worried about those two. I wonder could anything be wrong. Dinner is ready. Oh, thank you. Look at this dog. Hey, upstairs there. Hi. Dinner. Come on down and let's eat. You please stop gazing at that man and come and have some food. So basically, she's not allowed to exist or look in any direction if it's not pre-approved by uh, her husband slash boyfriend, fiance. Blow the horn again. Okay, I changed my mind. Don't ever blow the horn again in your entire life. <laughs> 